Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. I know it has been a long time since I posted my Microsoft Power BI PL300 certification video. So I thought let's share some most repeated actual exam questions for PL300 test as it would be beneficial for you guys who are planning to write the PL300 exam in the next few months or those who are planning to get certified next year. I have taken these questions from various different question banks so as to give you more variety and high quality of questions with various different difficulty levels. You can practice these questions or just go through them just before your exam to help you revise your syllabus and practice the most important tax formulas for these questions, which have a high probability to be repeated in your exam. As you might all be aware that PL300 exam is based on four different areas. That is prepare the data, model the data, visualize and analyze the data and deploy and maintain assets. So I've tried to choose these questions from all different areas to cover the entire syllabus and share questions with you, which can help you practice as well as score high marks in your actual exam. So let's get started with the top 10 questions that you might see in your PL300 Power BI certification exam this year. So let's start with question number one. You have a Power BI model that contains the following tables the enrollments table and a date table. In enrollments table, you have columns like enrollment ID, enrollment date, total paid, student ID, course ID, and starting date. In the date call table, you have columns like date, date key, month number, and year. So consider a new table named school year date, which has the same column schema as the date table. You want to create a report that shows the total enrollments by school year date and calendar month. So how can you achieve this task? The options available are add school year date to the model and create a one to many relationship with the enrollments table. Option number two is append school year date into the date table. Option number three is union school year date and date as one table. Option number four is delete the date table and use school year date as the main date table. Now, if you know the concept of SQL, you would be easily able to guess the right answer is append school year date into the date table. The date table and the school year date have the same structure. Since you want to filter the enrollment report by school year date as well as the calendar month, you can append them into one query. Now let's go to question number two. Consider a table that contains the last two years of sales data. You want to identify the outliers, which type of visual best fits your needs. So if whenever you see a question like this and you have to identify the outliers, the always the correct answer is the scatter plot because the scatter plot visual always identifies the outliers. They are an observation of the data that does not fit the rest of the data. Now let's move on to question number three. You have to plan and create a corporate Power BI desktop project that will be shared with the entire organization. You need to customize the report with both the corporate colors of your organization and a set of custom icons. How can you meet that goal? The options that are available are select the visualization you want to add to the report, then edit their color properties into the format pane. Option number two is configure an XML file and then import it into Power BI desktop as a custom theme. Option number three is configure a JSON file and then import it into Power BI desktop as a custom theme. And option number four is access to Power BI theme gallery and import a blank theme and then customize it. So you must need to remember in this scenario is most of these questions, whenever you will get them in the exam, the answer is always closer to the JSON file because JSON file is a format which is used for importing custom theme into Power BI desktop. As you can see, if I go to this link, uh, you will, on the Microsoft Learn website, you will see the right answer. To use reports in theme, report themes in Power BI Desktop, you always need to use JSON files. Right? Now let's move on to question number four. Your colleague passes your Power BI report named Delta Company Sales requesting support to optimize the report loading performances. Delta Company Sales retrieved data from an imported data set that contained one table within 15 million rows. The report is a single page with 12 Power BI default visuals. The customer complains about the report performance when loading data and interacting with the visuals. What do you suggest to increase report performance? 
options are remove unused columns from the table into the data model change the date connectivity uh, change the data connectivity to direct query convert all tax calculated measures into calculated columns and the fourth one is change the data connectivity to live data connections the answer in this case is remove the unused columns from the tables in the data model so if i go back to the microsoft learn document you would see that the best way of uh, data reduction techniques for import mo importing model is that if you remove the unnecessary columns from the power bi model it will always help you improve the performance of your power bi model right now let's go back to question number five consider a power bi model with two tables named enrollment and date so enrollments table contain five columns named student ID, total paid enrollment date, attendance date and starting date and the date table contains only one column named date. The table have the following relationship enrollments, enrollment date to date, date, enrollments column attendance date to date, the column is date and enrollments to starting date and the date table has the column date. To activate this relationship on enrollments, enrollment date you plan to create measure to count both the number of enrollments by attendance date and the enrollments by starting date. You can't meet the goal by duplicating data or loading additional data. That's the note that is given for this question. Now the solution that they are giving in the question itself is you create measure that uses calculate count and user use relationship tax function. Now the question is does the solution solve the issue? Can you guess what the answer is? The answer is yes you can so calculate count enrollment starting date comma and use relationship enrollment starting date comma date date so that is the DAX formula that we need to use so if I go back to the Microsoft learn document you can read the uh, DAX formula use relationship and understand how this DAX function works and how it needs to be used they have also given a great example of how to use this Now let's move on to the next question. Question number six. Consider a Power BI desktop project named Insurance BI that retrieves data from Microsoft SQL Server by using direct query connection. You're working on three tables named Insurance, Account and Customer. Check the sample data for tables shown in the picture. You need to model a relationship from the account table to the insurance table from the account table to the customer table by joining the ID account column. Right? As you can see in this table, the columns and the tables are already given. Now the options for this question are add two new columns, insurance ID and insurance account to the account table. The second option is add a new column that combines the insurance ID and insurance account columns, both in the insurance table and the customer table. Option number three is you must retrieve data by import connection model before model the relationship and the fourth option is create the relationship between insurance and customer tables and set the cross filter direction to both now let me take you back to the table so that you can have a look at that table structure for the customer table account table and insurance table now let me take you back to the options that are available can you guess the right answer? The right answer is add a new column that combines the insurance ID and insurance account column both in the insurance table and the customer table. You need to join the text strings inside insurance column and insurance account column into one text string using the concatenate function. How to check the concatenate function? Now let me take you to the Microsoft link this is the concatenate function you can learn more about it in Microsoft learn website and how to use it now let me take you to the next question question number seven you build a report to help the sales team understand its performance and drivers of sales the team needs to have a single visualization to identify which factors affect the success which type of visualization should you use? Option 1 is line and clustered column chart. Option 2 is key influencer chart. Option 3 is funnel chart. 
Can you guess the correct answer? The correct answer is key influencer. So, right? So always remember whenever there is a sales data representation and you have a question like this, the answer is usually key influencer. I can show you the example on the Microsoft Learn website how a key influencer graph looks. That's how a key influencer graph looks. It helps you identify the key factors that are affecting sales in a particular market or for a particular product. Now let's go back to question number eight. You have a Microsoft SharePoint online site that contains several document libraries. One of the document libraries contain manufacturing reports saved as Microsoft Excel files. All the manufacturing reports have the same data structure. You need to load only the manufacturing reports to a table for analysis. What should you do on Microsoft Power BI desktop? Option one is get the data from SharePoint online list, enter the site URL and then select combine and load. Option number two is get data from SharePoint online folder and enter the site URL. Edit the query and filter by folder path. Option number three is get data from SharePoint online folder, enter the site URL and then select combine and load. And option number four is get data from a SharePoint online list, enter the site URL, edit the query and filter by folder. What do you think the answer for this question should be? The answer is option number two, get data from SharePoint online folder and enter the site URL, edit the query and filter by folder path. Always remember that in SharePoint, the Microsoft files are always stored in multiple folder structure. And if you connect that SharePoint folder directly to the Power BI model, you will be able to extract all the Excel files in that folder and connect it directly to the Power BI. You can take a look at the Microsoft Learn document as to how you can connect your data easily with the Power BI. Now let me take you to the next question, which is question number nine. You have several reports and dashboards in a workspace. You need to grant all organization users to read access to a dashboard and several reports. What are the options that are available? Option number one is you assign all users the viewer role to the workspace. Option number two is you create an Azure Active Directory group that contain all the users. You share each report and the dashboard with the group. Option number three is you publish an app to the entire organization. Now, whenever you have to answer such questions, you need to make sure that the effort that is required from an admin should be minimal, right? And the answer is option number three, you publish an app for the entire organization. You can learn more about this when you go to the Microsoft Learn website and understand how publishing an app in Power BI works and how when you publish an app, you can give access to all the employees within your organization directly to that app and they will be able to access all your models as well as your Power BI dashboard, right? Now let me take you to, to the final question, which is question number 10. You have a Power BI workspace. You need to grant the user capabilities shown in the following table. User one, the task is create and publish app. For user two, the task is to publish reports to the workspace, add and delete reports and dashboards. Again, in the notes, they say the solution must use the principle of least privilege, which user role should you assign to each user. As you already know, the roles for in Power BI are admin, contributor, member and viewer. The options that are available are user one should be a member, user two should be an admin. Option number two is user should be a member, user two should be a contributor. Option number three is user should one should be a member, user two should be an admin. And option number four is user should user one is an admin and user two should be a contributor. What do you think the answer for this question should be? The answer is user one should be a member and user two should be a contributor. So if you, if I have to give you an explanation, 
see the Microsoft Learn documentation where it talks about roles in workspace, roles in workspaces in Power BI. You will see that admin, member, contributor and viewer are the roles available and the member has the ability to, you know, uh, add members and other lower permissions, publish, unpublish, change permission for an app, update an app, share items in an app, etc. etc. And contributors have, have access to copy a report, create a report, publish a report, create, edit, delete content such as report within a workspace. Right? So I hope it answers all your questions. Also a request to all of you guys who are watching, 87% of our audience has not subscribed to our channel yet. So please hit the subscribe button as it motivates us to keep working hard and share more videos with you every week. I hope you like these questions and it helped you assess what your preparation level is for the certification exam. I will share a set of another 10 questions in my next video. So stay tuned to get more content on Power BI from our channel. Please hit the subscribe button and like and share our videos to show your support. Have a great day and best of luck for your PL, PL 300 certification exam preparation. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.